Hello my friends and family. It is Wednesday, January 31st, the very last day of January. And is it me or did January just fly by? I'm telling you, yesterday was New Year's Eve. This month has flown by. Um, so I'm doing the Stitch With Me video. I'm going to try to do it a little bit early this week. So our friends in Australia and Japan have somebody to play with when they start partying. Early Friday morning for us, late Friday morning, Friday evening for them. Um, so hopefully I'll get this uploaded tomorrow, which is Thursday, um, our time. If not, it'll definitely be up by Friday. We'll see how things go. Um, but as you can see, we have a new start. Another new start. Mm -hmm. This isn't the high tea start. That was a little Quaker-esque by... Blue Ribbon Designs. I started it on Sunday um, when Caroline introduced the Friday Off the Grid High Tea new start in the Friday Off the Grid group. And this is a new start on the last Sunday of every month. And it's not encouraging anybody to go out and buy anything new. In fact, it's encouraging you to stitch what you got. Um, what you have because a lot of us have stuff in our stash that is kitted up that is ready to go and it's sitting there so let's start it up so that's what I did because I'm going to introduce a new segment to my update videos my regular update videos called things that Caroline made me do and one of those things is high tea so, of course, I say that in jest because, you know, it, of course, she doesn't make me do anything, but I am easily inspired and motivated by Caroline's suggestions, subliminal or otherwise. So, anyway, hi, T. I started that, I posted a couple of pictures on Face Group. Face Group? What's Face Group? On Facebook. Um, and then. The beautiful Mika, um, the lovely, talented, and of course, darling Bluebell on Floss Tube. She posted on Instagram that she finished her Frozen piece, which she's been working on, and it was fabulous. And then she announced, this was on Tuesday, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Then she announced that she was starting her Twisted Band Sampler, which we agreed to start together. Um, she's doing hers in Peacock Fantasy Colors with some added colors that she received from Olivia and Elena. Of course, they're blue and it's beautiful. And I'm doing mine in the Autumn Thread Pack from Fiberlicious Threads. So I had mine all kitted up, ready to go, just waiting for her to pull the trigger. And she pulled the trigger on Tuesday. So, of course, being true to my word, I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and start it. I might only get a couple of stitches in, but at least... We will have started it on the same day and be working on it for the same time period, so to speak. But I had every intention of going back to a little Quaker-esque. We'll come back to that. So I started stitching on this. And it was one of those moments where the perfect floss met the perfect fabric and the perfect pattern. And I'm just in love with it. So here we are. So before I get started any further and go any further because this is supposed to be a stitch with me video and I'm just sitting here talking. I need your opinion. I'm going to show you the colors. So this is neon orange. These are all the colors that are going into the Twisted Band Sampler which of course looks like this. All right? We've all seen it. So that's the Twisted Band Sampler. So I'm doing it in the autumn colorway from Fibalicious Threads. So neon orange, it looks really bright in the skein, but it's actually more subtle than that. I'm using one strand, um, one over two on 32 count. This is Golden Honey um, 32 count Lagana by Silk Weavers. So this is what the neon orange looks like stitched up. So it's actually more subtle than it is here. It's not neon orange. And then the second color I'm going to use 
is Orange Crush. The third color is Maple Leaf. Tiger Lily. I hope you guys can see all this. I'm stitching it upside down because I started in the top left hand corner and it's too high for me to stretch to reach up to on my Millennium Frame so I turned it upside down. And it's actually better for you guys to see it that way anyway. Autumn Bliss. Sun Baked Orange. Aren't these beautiful? And Montana Dust. So these are the colors that came in the Fibrilicious Thread Pack. You get two, of, two skeins of each of these. So here's the twist. Tell me what you think. I have this skein of Forest Fire from Karen Water Lilies. And I'm going to twist it up a little bit so you can see it a little better. But it has a pop of blue in it. But other than that blue, I hope you can see, why don't I zoom back a little bit? There you go. Other than this blue, it has the russet colors, all of those colors. You see the light orange, the dark orange, this orangey brown, like this one right here. All of these colors are in this scheme. So I'm thinking of throwing that into the mix. I don't know. Like, right here, it looks completely out of place, doesn't it? But something tells me it's going to look pretty great mixed in there with just that pop of blue and green. Oh, it's on my nail. I don't know. Maybe that's better to show it on the skein. What do you guys think? I'm telling you, and I can hear you, I can hear you telling me to take it out and just leave it like that. But there's something, something in me is telling me to throw that in there. So we'll see when we get there. We right now are only two colors in. So tell me what you think. Um, and I guess we'll find out when we get to that point how that'll look. Maybe I'll stitch a little bit up and we'll see how it looks and I might just take it right back out. I don't know. But anyway... Here we are. I started the this new start um, with Mika on Tuesday, and I'm just really enjoying this. I'm enjoying um, how the threads coordinate with the fabric. I'm enjoying. I don't know. I just think it looks really pretty and. I don't see me wanting to put it down. So for the past few weeks, I've been talking about, oh, I've been doing this monogamous stitching, and I don't know what's gotten into me, and da 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 And now here I am, all of a sudden, starting all the things. And I'm not complaining, because I'm not really buying anything. Well, I did, well, true confessions time. So, somebody posted on the Friday Off the Grid group, their progress, on Hoity Toity. And I apologize, I don't remember your name off the top of my head. But they posted their progress of Hoity Toity, and it was one of those really pretty, like, close-up pics that just make you want to stitch whatever it is they're showing. So, I saw it, and... I've always loved Hoity Toity. And I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh. So you know what happened. Right? I bought the pattern. But it's okay. Because in comparison to what I normally do, I've been doing pretty great. Well, since I took an account of what I've already spent for the first two weeks of the month, I think I stopped buying things as of January 15th. So yeah, what did I make it a week and a half? Great job. Lots of self-control there. So anyway, so I bought Hoity Toity. But I'm starting... I started the Little Quaker-esque. And I'm doing that 1 over 2 on 
40 count and I was going to do it with one strand of the Victorian Motto Sampler threads because they come in 20 yard skeins and I have several of them and the pattern when I first purchased the pattern and I kitted it up I read the thread requirements in incorrectly so I par purchased one skein of Twilight because that's all I thought it needed it was a it's a monochromatic pattern and I got one skein of Twilight from Weeks Dye Works I think so and I think I discovered it when I was actually doing an update video I was talking about oh this pattern only takes one skein and then I looked at it again and no it doesn't it takes four skeins yeah because each skein has five yards so I thought okay well rather than order four more skeins at th three more skeins of Twilight it's either five skeins of four yards or four y skeins of five yards either way it's 20 yards that was needed so I thought well rather than buy more skeins of Twilight I'll just use one of these Victorian motto skeins, which are 20 yards, which is fabulous. They're 20 yard skeins, but, oh, and that would prevent me from having to buy any more thread, right? All right. So I go to stitch one over two, come to find out if any of you use Victorian motto th sampler shop threads, let me know what you think. I don't think that's meant to be used with one skein because with one thread because that one thread was very thin. I mean, it was like sewing thread. It was really thin and you could see right through it as if I was stitching on 11 count. Um and I decided I didn't like that. So I picked that all out and I went to one of my silks for you hanks you know you get those huge hanks of silks for like twenty dollars or something and I have a couple of those so I grabbed one of those with purples and teals and gray and lavender and it's a beautiful colorway beautiful variegated silk and it's a huge hank of it so I can make like that one hank I can probably stitch death by cross stitch three times over maybe four so I was like alright I got plenty of this I'll use this Wow that was beautiful I enjoyed stitching with it I enjoyed how it looked on the 40 count now deep down I wish I did it 1 over 1 on 25 count I do but I'm not going to start it over again it's fine um, but it's covering beautifully I love the thread variegation I'm just really enjoying it um and so now I have this one and I'm gonna keep stitching on this until I don't feel like stitching on it anymore I'm just enjoying it that much um and the funny thing was before all of this madness started I was stitching on Desiderata and I honestly had the idea in my head and I convinced myself I'm just gonna st keep stitching on Desiderata until it's done um and somehow I magically, I magically ended up with some type of rotation again because that's the only way I can make sense of all of this stuff that I have signed myself up for. So I love the idea of high tea because I don't do stitch mania. I love watching people do stitch mania. I love seeing the wild antics of all the new starts. I love hearing about the planning processes for stitch mania, but I have never done stitch mania. I think I have done a version of stitch mania where I was going to do one pattern for the entire month of May. I was going to work on one design and I think I actually did that with Rafiki. So I had a monogamous version of stitch mania and that worked for me. But as far as like 50 million new starts in a month or in a year, I can't do it. But I did think about exactly what Caroline suggested for high tea. I thought about that before like maybe I'll do my own version of stitch mania throughout the year and just start one new project a month but I was thinking more 
at like the beginning of the month or something. Um, but for the same reasons, like I need to get some of the stuff I have started. At least, geez, put a dent in it, something. So when she suggests that, suggested that, I was like, okay, I'm in. So I'm already starting to think about, of course, what I'm going to do for next month. For next month at high tea. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know if I'm going to work on a long dog sampler that Tracy actually sent me a picture of somebody's whip. I don't remember the name of it, but I have it. And when she showed me the picture of the whip, it reminded me why I love it. So I was like, oh, maybe I can start that next month. And speaking of which, Tracy, if you're watching this, you're sending me messages right now. Um, so I was thinking maybe I could start that particular long dog next month. But then I was thinking to myself, oh, I got that long dog mystery sampler. The 12 month sow. Um, Long Dog collaborated with so and so and came out with a 12 month sow where you could either just get the chart or you can get the entire kit. And I just got the, the chart. So the whole entire sow was like $23. And I got it last year, but the first um, part of the sampler doesn't come out until February 2nd, which is Friday. So then I was like, well, that's going to be. A year-long sow, maybe I can do that every month. Then I got the idea I was going to restart Ink Circles, the Cirque de Circles, whatever it's called, the one that Caroline finished. Um, so I already have like all these ideas running through my head about all the things that I'm going to start. And then I have to figure out, well, if it's starting all these things, how I'm going to work on them? How am I going to work on them? So I was thinking maybe when I do the high tea start, I'll work on it for a full week and give it that full week um, starting that Sunday and ending on Saturday, right? So that's what I mean by all of a sudden I found myself back in rotation of sorts. So I don't, I guess it's safe to say guys, I'm no longer a monogamous stitcher and yeah, it took me 17 minutes to get to that point. Um, but it's all good. This is the life of a stitcher, and I'm not complaining about it. I love it. I love the fact that, in a way that we're celebrating our stash, this is, this is how I'm convincing myself, we're celebrating our stash, and we're digging into our stash. I actually have coined a term for my new favorite LNS, which is not my local needle workshop, but it's Letitia's Needlework Stash. How about that? So when I heard about the high tea and I watched Caroline's video, I said, well, I'm going straight to my LNS. And by LNS, I mean Letitia's Needlework Stash. I'm going to go shopping for a new start. And I did. And it was great. I went shopping at my LNS for a new start in my pajamas. And it was awesome. So yeah, I'm saying all this to say I'm not complaining about anything. I love it. I'm excited about it. I talked about the cruise that we're going on in June um, for my birthday slash wedding anniversary. And guess what day it falls on? Guess what day we leave? We leave on high tea time Sunday. So how exciting is it? that it's high tea time Sunday, and I get to take a brand new start with me, which is what I'm going to do, and work on it that entire week on a cruise. I mean, I'm saying, it was like perfect. So I'm excited about that. Notice I'm talking about, I'm excited about the stitching for, high, for the cruise and not the cruise. Yeah. Again, such is the life of a stitcher. Anyway. So guys, we might be going into uncharted territory today on the Stitch With Me video. Um, because I am almost done the cross stitching on this particular band. Which means the next band is specialty stitches. So, 
I might be driving the struggle bus for a couple of minutes while I figure out what in the world it is that she's asking me to do with this pattern. But let me tell you this. This pattern from Northern Expressions Needlework is nothing like that Esther's Waves pattern. The Esther's Waves pattern is all specialty stitches. And that's the one that I said it was like doing calculus late on a Sunday night. Um, and I almost regret saying that how difficult it was for me because it wasn't necessarily difficult. Challenging, yes, but not difficult. I think it was the time of day. Um, I was tired. My eyes were tired. It wasn't an ideal time to start a challenging pattern, but I hope that when I mentioned that on the video that I didn't discourage anybody from trying that pattern. It's really, really beautiful. Like a lot of people say that specialty stitches aren't their jam and that's perfectly fine, which is why she has a cross stitch version um, of Esther's Waves. But if you do like specialty stitches, I am totally eating my words. It wasn't the pattern, guys. It was the stitcher. So I am going to continue with Esther's Waves um, and give it a go, another go when I'm in a different frame of mind. But that's all to say that this pattern, and this is the specialty stitch version of the Twisted Band Stampler, I can look at it and tell it's not quite as intimidating these are some of the stitches where there's stitches where you have some bands that are all specialty stitches and you have some bands that are all cross stitches like these first two bands this is a band with the neon orange and this is a band with whatever that second color was orange crush so these two bands are all um cross stitch and then the next two bands are specialty stitches, but they don't look too bad. It's herringbone and what looks like, I don't know, it looks like some fancy version of a road stitch. It's actually a Smyrna cross. I'm pretty sure I've done those before. But the instructions, what am I doing right now? The instructions that she gives they're really clear, um, you know, but like with anything, you got to just take your time and um, maybe practice on a different piece of fabric. You know, practice makes perfect. We didn't come out of the womb knowing how to do specialty stitches. So I hope everybody's having a good week. It's really freezing here in Maryland right now, which is, you know, it's a typical winter, but I mean, it's that brittle, brutal cold. Like you walk outside and you feel like your skin is just like going to crack as soon as the wind blows. It's really something. And it never ceases to amaze me when I go to work. I go into work bundled up like an Eskimo. I mean, I have the scarf, I have the earmuffs, I have the jacket. I'm bundled up because I don't like to feel that cold wind. It's not just cold, it's windy. I don't like to feel that on my on my body. So I'm bundled up. And then you have some people, you know, that are too cool for school and they walk into work with their little fleece pullover and I'm like, dude, it's 15 degrees outside. I don't understand. I don't get it. But, you know, whatever. To each his own. Maybe some people run hotter than I do. I don't know. But it's cold. Like right now, my nose hurts. My nose hurts. It feels raw. You know, it's just... I don't want to wish summer on too fast. I'm just really complaining. That's all I'm doing right now. But I don't want summer to come too quickly. I like heat, but I don't like Baltimore humidity. Or Maryland humidity. I don't... I can't stand it. So heat I can handle. It's... Like, I've been in desert heat before, and I love it, but Maryland humidity is not cool. And I guess my Floridian friends are out there like, whatever, and you're probably right, because Florida heat, yeah, I really need to stop whining. So, but I hope everybody's having a good week. Um... 
I'm in a pretty good week. Work has been particularly busy, which is fine. Um, because last they checked, they pay me to deal with some of the stuff that I have to deal with, right? I guess I'm earning my keep. Um, but it's it's been a week, and I've been spending the majority of this week. I'm sorry if I'm shaking. I'm just coloring in what I just stitched, so I'm probably shaking the camera and irritating people. But anyway, um, it's been a busy week, and I've been spending the majority of this week a day in arrears, like all day today and yesterday. Yesterday I thought it was Wednesday, today I thought it was Thursday, and I keep saying tomorrow, like it's Friday, and then I, you know, get that rude awakening, like, oh my god, tomorrow is not Friday. So... I really need to get my life together with that because that's going to make for a very long end of the week. Um, but last weekend I posted some pictures on Facebook. Last weekend uh, my daughter turned 17. So we took her out. Oh, guys, I'm making such a mess right now. You have no idea. No idea what's happening off camera here. Oh my word. Um, oh my gosh. This is going to be bad to have to deal with once I get this piece of thread out. Um, I've got a huge tangle, so bear with me one minute. Somebody take a note or remind me what I was just talking about. Sorry, talk amongst yourselves. I don't know how this not happened. I have to find a better way. Micah, if you're watching, can you leave me a note or a comment? How are you storing your your threads? So let's talk about this real quick. I don't know who the note taker was, but remind me I was talking about my kiddo turning 17 last Friday. All right. So let's talk about these Fiberlicious threads real quick. I love the threads. I absolutely love them. But, you knew there was a but coming, right? So they come like this. In this beautiful skein, right? But when you unravel the skein, they come in 40 individual lengths of thread which is fine they come in 40 individual lengths of thread like this you see it's a pretty pretty long length right but my ends look at this my ends get tangled so I tried wrapping them on a bobbin Right now, I have them in floss away bags. Um, and I know I need to take care of this now because I'm afraid to put this down when it's tangled like this. So I'm just combing these tangles out real quick. So, they come in these 40 individual lengths. And when I put them on the bobbin, because they are 40 lengths, um, when you wrap it around the bobbin, as you can imagine, it gets bulky, right? So I didn't like that. So I'll show you what I did in a second because I just got finished untangling, I think. So if you have like one end, one thread that's a little bit longer than the rest of the threads, that's going to be the one that's going to cause like the knots and the tangles. So here we go. So here's the length of thread. It's all pretty much untang untangled, right? Okay. 
I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I'm just trying to work through it real quick. So, I fold it in half. So I have this closed end, right? But then this is what you have at the end. You have that. So, I fold it in half. Wait a minute. I'll show you. Keep stitching, guys. I'll tell you when to look up if you want to look up. So I fold it in half a second time. I twist it like that. Twist it. And then I kind of fold it in half. So it twists on itself and kind of looks like what it started with, right? And then I'll just put it in the floss away bag. Let me lay it down. I'll put it in the floss away bag like that. And you would think it would be fine, but when I just went to pull out one of the threads, it got tangled up at the end. So all that time that we just spent just trying to get that one tangle bit out and trying to get the threads back in some kind of decent working order. So, Mika, if you could tell me how you are storing your threads, and if you have the same problem, or anybody that uses fiberlicious threads, how do you store them? because you saw what just happened. So anyway, last Friday, kiddo turned 17 years old, which is kind of mind-blowing, right? So Friday night, we take her out to dinner because she's going to be spending the rest of the weekend with her friends, and we won't see her at all, and that's, that's fine. So we took her out to Texas Roadhouse, and... I jumped out the car while my husband parked, and I went in to get us a table, and there was a little bit of a wait. Not too bad. It was like 10 or 15 minutes. So I go ahead, and I get us a table, and of course, I ask um, the cashier, can you put a note on there for the server to have somebody come out, you know, and sing happy birthday to my daughter? She'll love it, right? Absolutely, she would not love it. Um but I would love it. So it's all that mattered, right? But anyway, so I asked them to leave a note for our server, you know, um, to let us know that we had a birthday to celebrate. And I had never been to Texas Roadhouse, so I didn't even know if they did anything, but apparently they do. So we're sitting there and enjoying our meal, having a good time, and the server comes out and she's, you know, asking us how we're doing. It was a great experience. I really loved it. We will definitely be back. She was like, are you guys doing okay? Can I get you anything else? And we're like, no, we're good. And I'm kind of looking at her, like, you know, telepathically telling her you're forgetting something. And lo and behold, she wasn't a mind reader. So <laughs> I was trying to get it, get them to come out so Troy could be completely surprised. Um, but it wasn't happening, so I had to, you know, straight up say something. And she had her birthday girl pin on because, you know, she's still a kid at heart and she wears her birthday girl pin every year. So I tell them it's her birthday, you know, and Troy is instantly mortified, and I love it. And so not only do they come out with, like, a bunch of people from the restaurant, a bunch of the staff, not only do they do that, but they come out from the all the way at the other end of the restaurant clapping and you can hear it and you know what it is. So they're coming out clapping and I just start clapping with this big goofy smile on my face. And I'm not sure if everybody realized what, why I was doing that. Otherwise I just looked like, you know, the special person in the middle of the restaurant that just starts clapping randomly and that's fine. I'll be that person. But anyway, so they're coming down and the excitement is building up and you know, I got the big stupid grin on my face and I'm clapping and as they start coming closer, everybody starts clapping. Well, it was this whole experience because they don't just sing like, happy, happy birthday. They didn't do that. No, they got the entire restaurant's attention. And they were like, excuse me, can I get everybody's attention here? We have this young cowgirl who's turning 17 years old today and we would like to 
you would like you guys to help us wish her a happy birthday or something like that. I mean, it was drama. It, oh, I was loving it. It was dramatic. But then, Jesse, you know what happened next, right? It's the best thing that could ever possibly happen. They pulled out this huge saddle. And they said they wanted Troy to get on the saddle. And she's like, oh, no, I'm not doing that. And I was like, oh, yeah, you are. You're getting on that saddle. Whipped out my phone so fast. And she crawled out past her dad. And she's getting on the saddle. And I was hoping for a cowboy hat to come out, but it didn't happen. So she's on the saddle. And they're all clapping it up. And they were like, on the count of three, everybody say, yee-haw. I'm loving it. And I'm recording it. And I'm laughing. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm screaming and everything. And I was like, this is going directly on Facebook, you know. Just to rub it in a bit. It was magic. It was great. But the joke was on me because after all of that, after all of that excitement, guess who didn't hit the record button? Guess who didn't hit the record button? Guess who did nothing with their phone? Yeah, that would be me. So then I was like, I didn't hit record and I was so upset. And then I was, of course I was playing, but I looked at the server and I was like, can you, can you guys just do all that again? And I was kidding, but yeah, they, they, no. Apparently there wasn't a tip big enough in the world for them to do that. Anyway, so that was the story of that. But it was exciting and it was fun. And she spent the whole weekend with her girlfriends and that was good too. So, um, I watched Stitch M's video, Emma, last week and she did Tracy's word tag and it was fascinating because you know kind of got a little bit of tunnel vision you know when you're when all you know is you know the things that you think are, are you know is common knowledge to everybody it's amazing it was amazing it was interesting to me to hear that some of the things that um, we identify she had never even heard of like daddy long legs or roly poly bugs and it was very interesting because that is something that you know we in the U.S. might think is you know common knowledge we might s call it something different but you know when you say the bug that curls up on his own it's a roly poly bug or what is a shower called what, when there's only rain, but sun, when there's rain and sun? And some people call that a sun shower or whatever. Um, the, the small spider with the long legs is a daddy long legs. So she was saying that she knows like the spider that, that we're talking about, but it's just called a spider. You don't call it a daddy long legs. Um, and I don't think she recognized the roly poly bugs at all. But it was interesting because it made you think that there are, you know, things that aren't common knowledge. And I mean, of course we know that. We know that. But it was very interesting to hear her say that some of the things that were described, she had no idea what it was. So then she said, um, I don't know if she said it in jest or not, but she was saying, maybe I should do a UK word tag. And I jumped on that on the comments because I think it would be fascinating to have her do a word tag and interesting to hear what her answers would be like for example there's a couple of things like I don't know there's a couple of things that I know um have different names in the UK than in the US like here a bathroom I believe is referred to as a loo now I'm not sure if a loo is the bathroom or if the loo is that the actual toilet or commode I don't know um, so that would be interesting. And like another thing we call sweaters in the UK, they call jumpers. So I'm sure there's a lot more that would just be fascinating. So Emma, if you're watching, yeah, put that tag together. Cause I, for one, would love to hear that and participate in it. Um, I think it would just be very interesting. 
Um, speaking of word tag, there's been a lot of wordplay on these videos, but I, rem I meant to say something last time. Somebody left the funniest comment. And of course, I didn't. I took a note, but I don't have my notes in front of me. I took a note of who said it, so I apologize, but you'll know who you are. So it was one of those videos, I think it was the infamous video where I went on about caramel for like 25 years. I went on about caramel for so long. But anyway, um, she left a comment saying that I think it was in Australia or Canada. Oh, gosh. Where were you? I want to say Canada. I want to say Canada because I meant to ask Caroline about it, but I didn't quite know how to approach the subject, and you'll understand why in a second. Because she was saying, I'm going to go with Canada. I'm sorry if you're in Australia. But she was saying in Canada, underwear, particularly boys' underwear or men's underwear, is referred to as gitches or gotches. And I was tickled pink by that because... I was like, so if somebody says, thinks to themselves, okay, I'm going to put on my underwear, do they say I'm going to put on my gitches? Or I need some more gitches. These gitches are really raggedy. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like men's underwear is called gitches or gotches. And it was just so funny to me to try to use it in a sentence. So I was saying to her that, I replied to her and I said, that's really funny because I've never heard of that. But in the South, like underwear here, in the South, underwear might be called like drawers here. And that might be funny because, of course, drawers are what you put your clothes in, like a chest of drawers. Or in the South, it's also what you call underwear. It's And it's usually men's underwear that's referred to as drawers. drawers. Men's underwear or boys' underwear. But it's isn't it funny? It's so funny. But anyway. So you're learning all kinds of things on these videos. Um, like Emma said, what I call a buggy or what other people might call a shopping cart. Um, in the UK, it's referred to as a trolley. Now, here, a trolley is like a street car. Like a cable car, a street car. Like what you see in San Francisco. But here, that same kind of cable car is called a light rail. Um, it's just so funny how our words are so different. Terminology, I should say. Um, let's see here. Mm, pretty sure I made a boo-boo, so let me think about this for a second. Mm-hmm, I did. So, I have some, I was watching some movies last week. And I watched Girl on the Train. So I really wanted to see this when it came out. But I don't, I don't really go to movie theaters. Um, for a number of reasons, like... Emma talked about the reasons why she doesn't go to movie theater as much, or as she calls it, cinema. Um, she doesn't go to the movies much because it's like idle time. Um, and she has a hard time just sitting still, not doing anything for a long period of time. And I think Gerald agreed with that. He said he had the same issue. I don't go to the movies because when people go to the movies... They have sticky snacks like chocolate and candy and popcorn and all kinds of things that fall on the ground that are still there when I go into the movie theater. The movie theater floor is always sticky and gross, right? I don't know how long it's been sticky and gross. I don't know how long that had been going on before. You know, maybe somebody cleaned it up right before we went in. Maybe that stuff had been there for a month. I don't know. But the first thing I think about in that situation is mice. Mice or bugs. And I am telling you, I don't want to be the person. 
I don't want to be the person sitting next to me, in front of me, or behind me. If I'm sitting in a dark movie theater and a bug crawls in my shoe or a mouse runs over my foot. If you don't believe me, ask my husband. Ask my husband what would happen in a movie theater if some kind of critter touched me. It would be a show. It would be an event. People might get injured. I don't know. But nobody wants any parts of that, including me and those around me. So I don't go to the movies because as I'm sitting there in the dark, that's what I'm sitting there thinking about in the back of my mind. Is there some little critter that's about to run over my foot or run inside my pocketbook for me to find later on when I'm looking for a Tic Tac? I don't know. I can't do it. So that's why I don't go to the movies. And, you know, here we are again. I have no idea why I said that. Oh, yeah, Girl on the Train. So Girl on the Train, I really wanted to see it when it came out, and I kind of forgot about it because I was like, eh, I'll watch it on cable when it comes out. And I forgot about it. Well, now it's on Showtime. So I watched Girl on the Train, and that was really good. It was really good. I kept meaning to re read the book, but I couldn't get past I listened to a lot of audiobooks um, while I stitch. And I think the best part of an audiobook to me is the narrator. Like, let's use Harry Potter as an example, right? I love Harry Potter. I've seen the movies. I've read the books twice. I've read the physical book twice. And I've listened to the entire audiobook series. If you have not listened, if you are a Harry Potter fan, you've read the books, you've watched the movies, if you are a stitcher, get the Harry Potter audiobook you can get it from Overdrive, from your library. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It's absolutely on Audible. But listen to the series. It's a totally different experience. I laughed. I cried. I was into it. But it's because of the narrator, Jim Dale. He knows how to tell a story. He was. It was like he, he was truly acting. Um, where he gave so much life to each of the characters. And it was just a whole new way of experiencing Harry Potter. But Harry Potter, that whole series, is probably up there with um, one of my number one um, top picks for audiobooks. My other top pick for audiobooks based on the narration, which brought the book to life for me, was The Help. Um... That was the movie with, uh, what's her name, Emma Stone. Is it Emma Stone, I think, and Viola Davis? The movie was great, but the book, oh my gosh. The audiobook, it was something to listen to. Um, really good. Really good. But anyway, I digress. So I couldn't get into Girl on the Train, the audiobook, because I think it was because of the narrator. I, she just wasn't doing it for me. So I watched the movie and it was fine, but I don't have the book to compare it to, which I usually like to be able to do. I like to be able to compare the, the book experience, which in my opinion is always better, to the movie. Not always, but most of the time the book is better because it's more descriptive. There's more of a story to tell in the book than you, you can in a two-hour movie. But anyway, then I watched Before I Go to Sleep. If you have Netflix, it's called Before I Go to Sleep with Nicole Kidman and Colin Firth. If you like a thriller, a psychological thriller, not scary. Nobody's going to like jump out and it's not like Jason Voorhees or anything. But if you like a good psychological thriller, you need to stop what you're doing, get your stitching, and watch this movie on Netflix. It is really good. And that's all I'm going to say. That's all I have to say about that. Somebody was talking about, it was Danielle. I was watching her, was it her Stitch With Me video? I think it was. And she was talking about movies that she liked. And she said, What Lies Beneath? <laughs> I think that's one of like the all-time great psychological thrillers. That movie was good. It had such 
it had such a good twist and I mean it was one of those things where it truly made you jump like it thrilled you you know movies don't do that anymore they're, you know they do but they're sometimes cheesy or overly gory I like a good suspense psychological thriller that just blows your mind at the end I love it um, and when she mentioned that, I was like, oh, yeah, that was a good movie. So I rewatched that. That was available on, dem on demand. Um, what I've really been into lately has been Victoria on PBS. Um, that's a public station here in the U.S. Oh, my gosh, it's so good. It's so good. It's like The Crown, but on public television. Maryland Public. Is it on MPT? It's from PBS, but it it's made by PBS, but it comes on Maryland Public Television. So whatever your local public television station is, it probably comes on there, but it's a PBS um, production. And it's so good. It's so good. Um, so that's helping me get over my missing the crown. Because, you know, you binge watch it on Netflix and then you got to wait a year. Um, but I love those period dramas. I really do. Like, Call the Midwife. Um, <laughs> it's much more than Call the Midwife. I'm just drawing a blank right now. But Call the Midwife, The Crown. Um... That's all I can come up with. But you know those period dramas. I love those types of movies like The Other Boiling Girl. I'll watch documentaries on like Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth. I just love that stuff. Um, so anyway. I'm rambling on about now. Um, but actually it's perfect timing because I'm putting in the last of the cross stitches here. We're at 52 minutes. I think that's a good place to wrap up. Um, because I don't know how long it's going to take me to wrap my, round, my mind around these specialty stitches. So I think it's a good place to stop. Do you guys hear the thread? I wonder if anybody's like loving the thread, the sound of the thread going through. Do you hear it? Yeah. Anyway. One final public service announcement. Danielle put out her husband tag video. Go and watch it. Stay till the end. That's all I have to say. Um, he did really well, Danielle. He really did well. I really have to... I gotta get Joe to do it. He said he'll do it. I've asked him like three or four times, so there's nobody to blame but me. I just haven't done it. I don't know why. But, um, yeah. Anyway, he did really well. But watch her video, her husband tag video, and just stick around till the very end. That's all I'm saying. It's funny. But, on, um... All right, guys, so I am going to upload this. Um, I know I did a whole lot of rambling in this video, but if you're still with me, thank you for sticking around to the end. Thank you for all of the wonderful comments you guys leave. Um, you leave the sweetest comments, and I read every single one of them, and I'm doing better with responding to all my comments. Not all, but 99% of them. I'm making an effort. Um, so I really appreciate all of the kind words um, that you've shared. And thank you for watching these videos. I, I hope you enjoy watching them as much as I enjoy doing them. Um, it is the end of the month. So I think I'm going to do an update video. Because I have stitched every single day this month in January. Um, so I have some whips to show you. And it's not just one whip, as we've discussed. I got a couple. The Embrace, um, I called my local needle workshop today, and it's still not done, but it's because they were waiting on the frame to come in. So they were hoping that the frame came in today, and if it did, quote unquote, if it did, then it should be ready by Friday. So if I can pick it up on Friday, then I will definitely have an update video for you guys this weekend. If you don't see an update video, it's either because I didn't get my embrace back or because I was lazy but either way there'll be pictures posted on Facebook um, and Instagram that I can guarantee so that's all I have to say for now thanks for sticking around with me 
I hope you get a lot of stitching done and feed your OCD, your obsessive cross stitch disorder. Um, and until next time, happy stitching, my friends. Bye.